Hello, Saints Nation! My name is Jackson the Pride Brown, joined alongside John Billabang Zudima. Today we got St. Clair College versus. Oh man, I can't remember. Unica. 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 I can't remember how to pronounce it, man. In Unica. <laughs> Something Unica. That, that, that rolls off my tongue weird. But Unica College here, going to be against St. Clair. It is going to be NACE Conference Finals once again, just like the Rock League broadcast we just yeah. put on. And it's going to be a good one here for the Saints. Best of five rather than the best of seven we saw in the Rock League here. Um, but overall, Saints Call of Duty, I still don't think they've dropped a map all season. Not and yet. now in NACE Conference oh. Finals, they're looking to keep that record up. The only thing I'm concerned about is Utica actually was the only team to get close. They went, they ended up going up five three on Search and Destroy against Utica or uh, against Saint Clair, and then Saint Clair pulled it back and ended up coming back and winning at six five. So um, a lot of fight here, and they were the only team to I think get over two hundred points against them in hard points. So I definitely think of all the challengers they faced so far in the regular season, Utica has been their toughest, and we they did end up winning that three zero. They ended up sweeping the series, but it was definitely not an easy one for Saint Clair. You anticipating Utica to take a map on this? I one? think so. I think for me. Looking at the season, yes, St. Clair has been perfect on every map, but I think their search and destroy hasn't been the cleanest. So I think for me, it's going to be a 3-1 series. I think Utica will be able to take a search and destroy off of them, but uh, I think their raid control hard point has looked incredible, and I think their... Um, our hard point, sorry, their control has been incredible, and I think their hard point has been really good too. Yeah, I think that map one and three are going to go to the way of St. Clair. Just like I completely agree with you as to what you're saying, right? Raid control, I just don't see a world where St. Clair gets beat on that. Uh, Moscow hard point seems to be like one of their comfort picks uh, going throughout the season, and it seems as if that's like Moscow hard points, like their map to like really do what they want to do on. And uh, you know, the, the one way I could see St. Clair dropping this series is losing maps two, four, and five. Hmm. I think I think that's right. the only way St. Clair loses this series is losing maps 2, 4, and 5. I think they take map 1, uh, the hard point Moscow, and I think they take that uh, map number 3 on the raid control no matter what. Um, I think it's up to those other three maps here. Yeah, so the maps are going to be, like you are saying, Moscow, hard point, and then we have standoff uh, for Surgeon to Shore. We have raid control and raid hard point, and then the last one is going to be... Uh, Moscow search and destroy so yep. very standard maps everything St. Clair's played before and everything that they're comfortable on so I think both teams are very happy with how these maps ended up playing out and it should be an interesting series and I mean for St. Clair you still have a perfect season going you want to keep that rolling into playoffs and I think it's definitely doable but I think Utica is going to be a challenge one thing that's actually really interesting for me here is uh St. Clair doesn't play Miami near as much as they used to like St. Clair used to consistently play Miami it used to be their go-to instead of uh the Moscow or whatever it is here now standoff um you know there is new maps in the pool like like standoff right so they have the options to play whatever they please but it's just interesting to see them uh you know so comfortable on Miami so consistent yeah. playing Miami but now before last season now switching it up maybe it's some of the roster changes I don't really know, but this is going to be a really close series. I'm very excited to get this one underway between St. Clair College and Utica. Uh, for the Moscow, I think a lot of it's going to come onto these rotations. St. Clair has to be on the ball for these rotations. Hard point from 1 to 2 is a big one as well for St. Clair to be able to capitalize on, yeah. and I think that's all what it comes down to. Search and Destroy, on the other hand, um, that's just kind of like a wild card, I feel like, in my eyes. Right In the raid control, we know what St. Clair has to do. They've been doing it all season long, and they're just going to be playing their, their control game. They, they have a very nice setup. I think that they're control is so strong because of how good their communication is on it because yeah. control is one of those modes where like communication is like very key yeah and i think for a hard point too communication is very important on rotations and knowing how to play around each rotation to play around each hard point specifically and I, I feel like with how good the coaching has been this season with dawson and what kind of impact he's had on the team i think that's why they're so strong on these team coordinated uh, game modes such as hard point and control because you have that strong coach you have this guy who says okay this is what strategy I want to implement this is how I want you to play out these and these are your specific roles and the fact that he's able to instill that in the team is so important for how these rounds turn out yes completely agreed with you in that regard here so <sighs> do you, so what are you predicting? You're predicting 3-1? 3-1? Okay, I, I'm going to still go 3-0 okay. I'm, I'm still believing in the Saints 3-0 here I think that they stand off search and destroy is a pick that the Saints just kind of like to have fun on, but yeah. I still think that they are like they're just basic mechanic skill, their fragging out abilities, all of that will be able to, uh, you know, help them out in taking that yeah. standoff search and destroy there. It is conference finals, so a lot on the line here. We are going to be moving into our map number one on Moscow here now in just a second, but nice Star League. I mean, it's a it's been a fun day in the conference yeah. finals, right? I mean, it's very important here, and it's going to be same situation as the Rock League one, right? Where you know you're going to have all your conference finals winners going through into playoffs. I think there's like eight to sixteen or somewhere in that range for all these nice leagues and stuff like that, right? So going to be very interesting to see how things play out. But yeah, St. Clair College and it's going to be Utica College here. Yeah, it should be interesting. I mean, for St. Clair, obviously the expectation is they're going to be going into playoffs. They're going to be making it far in playoffs. So I think 
anything that you slip up here can be taken advantage of by these other teams that you're going to see later on because you're talking about like a perfect season they haven't been challenged really significantly by any team other than utica so i think moving into playoffs this is where you start getting your actual play in just good quality practice for these playoffs or good quality games for these playoffs so you have some real competitive experience because this is going to be your real challenge that you're going to be um playing against yeah one thing i will say sinkler is starting bad side so they do have the rotation but you do see brandon on your mini map they're already looking to challenge it but from the side of utica jalen Way in the back line, Brandon gonna get spotted out, and Jalen gonna whip that one. And that is gonna keep the rotations in favor of Utica. And honestly, Utica has a great start on this hard point here. St. Clair struggling to flip the rotations here. And, uh, you know, they will finally hop onto the point here and actually get some points. Oh my god, Gorilla! Going crazy! Gets a 3k in mid! That should do the trick! Flipped spawns for Utica and split spawns with that as well. And that is now going to be the side of St. Clair pressuring this backside building, trying to find a pick over here and take over these spawns. And just when it was looking so good for you, they had taken control of that point. Gorilla finds three in mid there and is able to take advantage of that first hard point. Just, I mean, it started off with Utica going up 7-0, but St. Clair able to get those three kills and clean up the rest of the hard point. And just when it looked bad for St. Clair. I mean, St. Clair doesn't still look great for St. Clair because they don't have rotations, right? I mean, yes, Sauce is doing some work here. Priestly keeping these players off the point and not allowing them to capitalize as much as they could on this point. But they still have the rotations in the end of the day. And St. Clair has to worry about that. And they're having a really tough time dealing with hard point two. That's what I was talking about in this game. Rotations is going to be so key for St. Clair to be able to come through and actually win something here. Uh, St. Clair, at what point in time do you just scratch this hard point, call it off, and then uh, go to the next one? They're applying a little bit more pressure here right now trying to get some players off of it but it's not easy but now it's actually gonna be sauce able to make his way onto the point yeah and gorilla feeling himself in this game's five and four looking pretty good so far in this one they are going to be able to claim that hard point for the last 20 seconds or so and the next one will be rotated on already by Utica. so Utica will call that one off and they will rotate over to this next hard point get ready for that setup and try and take control of it early on now, do you think it's a little weird for these players right now after playing Vanguard probably like all week, um, you know, grinding it out and whatnot, yeah. and then hopping on the Cold War and you're like, oh, this feels a little bit weird. Cod is Cod, yeah, right? Cod, yeah, I, I pick it up what you're saying, but yeah, it might be a little bit of uh, it's, I mean, it's a different. Off. Yeah, it's definitely different. Yes. And I mean, for St. Clair too, I talked about like Utica's really their only challenge. They played them, I think it was like four or five weeks ago already. So for them, it's been quite a while since they played against a team of True. this caliber. So I think that might also be a factor in uh, a little bit of their struggles here early on. And that's the thing that we talk about, right? Whenever we're talking like St. Clair playing all this easiest comp easier competition, um, will it keep them looking as good against these prime teams? Uh, they have obviously still been scrimming a lot of these top teams still. So that's what we do like to see and like to hear and obviously still keeping themselves very involved in this game still leading by 15 or so and they do have rotations for next i believe yes they do so i mean overall pretty good stuff so far from st Clair starting off this game and oh my god sauce and gorilla just completely shutting down any opportunity utica might have had yeah it looks like they will again scratch this hard point they will rotate over to that next one already you see four committed already onto this one at the bottom and i mean realistically right now Utica is actually fighting back oh pretty god, hard but Brandon. the problem is they can't hold these last 25 to 30 to 20 seconds of these hard points. It seems like St. Clair is able to get those rotations in. And there isn't really a solid hold at the beginning for Utica. So yeah, they do have a decent amount of points. And St. Clair is up quite a bit. But everything Utica is getting is kind of just these middle 15 to 20 seconds of these hard points. Ooh, a nice stick. Honestly, Utica, if they were, if they had the slaying power that St. Clair had, I think Utica wins this game. I'm going to be honest with you right now. St. Clair, they're a little off the ball on rotations wise. Yes, they're still leading. Yes, they're doing pretty good well on rotation, still bottom line. But Utica is really still playing smart, getting in the positions they need. They're just not winning those crucial gunfights that they need to win. And it's resulting in St. Clair now winning these gunfights. And that is now going to be St. Clair up by 40. Utica is on the point though, but St. Clair looking like they're already getting ready for these next rotations. Yeah, Same with Utica. That really has been the difference this season too, is that um, you have this player in Priestley that is just uh, so incredibly good. You see 13-6 now, 13-7. Uh, he has just been so good. He's been able to frag out on so many maps, and that has really been the difference maker for St. Clair. Obviously, you've seen Sauce and Brandon Gorilla all have their pop-off games, but I really feel like the fact that you have Priestley, a guy that is just that oh. X-factor, is, is so important. It's going to be a really big plank. You're going to find Prince and Brandon going to back off, but we'll be taken out by Alan there. I mean, it was a smart play to not go for that player there and just try to get a little bit more spawn control. It didn't work out, but it, and it was the right idea, right? So that is going to be Sauce and Grill picking up some picks, maybe forcing this Utica College line back a little bit. And the only thing keeping Utica in this game also is being able to consistently control point two because St. Clair hasn't been able to get their hands on it, but now the, fawns are, the spawns are flipped and this is going to be St. Clair locked and loaded for point two. And uh, I 
I think if St. Clair can get a good hold on this hard point two, then I, I just, I'm gonna call this game over, to be completely honest, because uh, hard point number two is so big on Moscow. Yeah, I really feel like they've been able to take control of this, and yes, at, in the last five seconds or so, Ooh, it will be kill. Utica taking care of it, but that's gonna be St. Clair already hopping onto that next one, and I mean, it is a 30-point lead. It isn't too significant right now. It's definitely uh, one hard point could make a huge difference here, and if you can control this one, they can pull it to about even. Oh no, I think they forced St. Clair off of spawns, actually, and I think they did. This is actually really concerning. Brandon also going to get stuck. That's two down now for Utica. Sauce is just trying to make something happen. He's just trying to rack up as much time as they can, but the full 60 is not going to be here from St. Clair. That big frag with that Gorilla Assault Rifle, but it's just not enough as of here. Now for the set of Gorilla, he's just trying to find more of these open picks, but, I mean, he's just stuck up there in that hospital area. It's going to be Utica trying to tie up the scoreline a little bit. Yeah, they are going to get quite a bit of objective time on this hard point. The next rotation will be in the favor of St. Clair, but for right now, they'll pull it to almost even after they clean up this last hard point. So definitely, ooh, there is a spawn here, though. Sauce trying to get this last player off. It's not going to oh, spawn wow. him out, though. So they will be able to hold this hard point close to about even. Yeah, so now all the rotations are here for the Saints. That's a big pick from Gorilla to shut down that player. And honestly, if you're that player right there, you're not anticipating Gorilla to be that far push up with an assault rifle, ready to lock, lock and loaded, ready to go. Uh, but here we go. It is now going to be back onto the side of Utica to make their pressure as Priestley's going to be holding down the point. Jalen going to be a problem to worry about, but Sauce going to come behind and clean that one up with pr no ease. With ease, <laughs> sorry. But uh, yeah, it's 40 seconds remain. If St. Clair can get this full 40, um, it's going to be huge for them. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, they have locked down this hard point pretty well here. They haven't allowed you to even step on top of it. And we were saying the game was about even, but this hard point just seems like you can't really get a good foothold onto it. And then St. Clair Ooh. just opening up the lead now up to almost 50 here when the game seemed to be about even. Yeah, and that's a oh. big couple picks there from the guys over at St. Clair. Brandon, Gorilla, and Sauce all picking up one for themselves. Frenzy actually going to be spotted out here and frag down from Sauce. So now it's a 165 to 107 scoreline, and this is starting to really look like it's starting to swing in Saints' favor. And this is where you can see the respawn kind of uh, experience come through for St. Clair College, right? I mean, they've been so experienced and so good at these respawns for uh, as long as I can remember, as long as I've been a student here at St. Clair. And I mean, they're going to consistently show what they can do here now. Yeah, opening up quite a big lead. They were able to take the full 60 on that one. There wasn't even a, uh, any kind of point taken there by Utica. This one, they will finally be able to get some objective time back. But for right now, I mean, they've opened up the lead so widely. I just don't see a way that they can actually come back in this game unless the, the next two hard points are just completely in their control. Yeah, they need a full hold on this one and then getting rotations for that next one. The next hard point is middle, so that's kind of like contested. I, it's really anybody's game if, uh, if you do get the full hold on this one, but it doesn't look so. Utica getting shot down by streaks of St. Clair. This is going to be Sauce just poking his head out, trying to get a little cheeky frag, but not going to work out for him. And now with just 15 seconds remaining on this clock, the closest Utica can get this one is like 180 to like 140. So this is going to make things a little bit more tough on them. St. Clair getting locked and loaded, ready to go for this middle hard point. And I think this whole game is really going to once again come down to hard point number two after this middle hard point. Yeah, it's definitely been the key one for both teams. Obviously, we saw um, number three was very, very heavily controlled by St. Clair. And even number four, I mean, yes, Utica was able to get about uh, 60, 70% of it. But St. Clair, the fact that they're able to get 30% of number four and they're able to get 30% of number two just means there isn't really a chance for Utica to pull it to even because you're not able to take advantage of those preferred hard points that you're getting. Yeah, right. You get your preferred hard point there in that regard. And then it's just like, okay, well, uh, St. Clair has just too many points. Points. If they get a third of it, like it's you're just balancing out at that point. So St. Clair going to be controlling middle too. They're actually going to hit that 200 point marker, and usually the team who hits 200 points first is the team who closes it out. And uh, St. Clair going to be doing that here now, leading by about 70, starting to really pull away at their lead. Uh, they don't have spawns for next, which is really big for Utica. But Utica has to get a full hold for me to like think that they have a chance to come back and win this one out here. Yeah, for sure. Next one will be in their favor, but if St. Clair can even get uh, a little bit, maybe 20 seconds of it, it's basically going to guarantee the win. They're not going to have any trouble. And it looks like Utica not even going to contest that at the end. They're just going to allow St. Clair to rotate through, and it looks like they're going to rotate through the building here. Divin going to find one, and Prince going to find another, so good fight back so far here for Utica. Yeah, all the picks they need, and now two on four over here towards this hard point. It's not really going to go full well in their favor. They're just waiting for their team to regroup, but not even possible as Jalen's just going to be pushing Priestley out. Sauce trying to find Jalen here on the outskirts, but no, that's going to be Divin or Divin trying to clean that one up. Brandon going to come through, maybe finds one, signs a second. Those are two massive picks as Gorilla finds one in the back line. Now, if 
he can just lay down, keep his life. Brand will get spotted out and will get fragged, but Precinct will be here on a refrag. So now, St. Clair holding this, and St. Clair can win off this. I'm just letting that know to everybody here now. St. Clair only needing 13 on this hill. It's going to force Utica to... They, they, Utica can't play rotations right now. They have to force out this hill, and St. Clair's fragging them out. Like They have to get here right here right now. Only a few seconds remain. St. Clair fragging out, and that might be it, folks. One second is all they need. St. Clair College will take your game number one, 250 to 163, but that personally, that's the best game I've seen all season long for the opposing team that St. Clair is playing. Uh, it was the closest game, uh, uh, much more enjoyable. I forgot how to cast yeah, close games of Call of Duty it's, it's for so a while. It's so nice to actually see them. They're actually a close game. It's, it's, and I mean, really, it was a very even game up until that third, uh, the third rotation of the hard point. Yeah, the third on set the of rotations. One around. Like, yep. it, it just felt like they couldn't really do anything, and St. Clair got the full 60 on it. They didn't allow you to get on it, and after that, it just kind of snowballed into how the rest of the game played out. You couldn't really come back from that point, and for St. Clair, I mean, Definitely a time where you're challenged, right? This was like you almost were drawn even here um, for half of the game. So I think looking forward, this is going to be a good competition of a series. And that's why I predicted 3-1. I think there's definitely a chance for you to try and take one back from St. Clair. Here. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be completely honest here. Uh, that, that just looked really well from the Saints. And uh, they, they, despite playing these stronger teams, you can tell that they've been scrimming against yeah. you know these stronger level teams. And uh, it is going to be the side of Utica, at least giving them a little bit of a challenge there and giving them some uh, testing. And, uh, you know, I don't think that, you know, St. Clair might not come away with that dominantly with the win there. If it isn't for, like, Brandon and Gorilla going in, getting, like, two, three, three Ks to clear sites, like, that's really big frags that were very, very... Uh, influential in the scoreline of this game so now I'm going into game number two search and destroy on standoff this is the most scary pick for the yeah. saints in this whole series and right this, this was where they actually almost lost it was standoff search and destroy against utica that they went down 5-3 and then yes they did end up coming back and winning 6-5 but they were within one round of losing yeah. their perfect record so i think that is very scary and obviously i mean when you're talking about how the series went looking back on the season you can just pull back to this game and say okay this is where we struggled the most this is where we want to improve the most and how we can and how we can defend um because a lot of times i felt like watching back that game utica had the advantage on the attack and there just wasn't really good defense from st Clair. and yes in the end they ended up pulling it off but that is going to be somewhere where they have struggled a little bit and that utica can take advantage of yeah, Utica. Uh, I haven't really seen them play a whole lot of Search and Destroy, so I'm excited to. And it will be on standoff as we are loading in. You can see on screen here now as we do get ready to get started. But standoff is an interesting map. I love seeing these BO2 throwbacks come back into the game and actually uh, make an appearance. So we'll see it here now as Utica and St. Clair getting kicked off. Search and Destroy, map number two. All on St. Clair. Still have that perfect season running, trying to keep it going, but Utica... Want to try back, have something else to say about that. And this was where St. Clair struggled the most throughout the season. So I definitely think they're going to be challenged here. We'll be frenzy picking up a 2K. Am I watching Search and Destroy or Hardpoint? That was like... just completely rushed towards the middle. We want to find any picks we can. But Utica now with the advantage up a player. This could get dangerous for St. Clair. Yeah, I th unless Gorilla can go a little big here. Frenzy looks like he wants to find an angle. And Gorilla did get spotted. So Frenzy just going to send some utility up there. And that's going to be Gorilla cleaned up there from Polish Prince. Now all up to Brandon. 1v3. We've seen him pull off things like this before. And he starts off nicely. Now a one on two. And he does make it out with his life. They know his general location. But not as much anymore as he snuck away. This bomb will be going down on B though. We're going to force brandon to push them yeah and they're actually playing very very close together here just playing for the trade most likely if they get separated that is gorilla's or brandon's chance to try and come back in this game he was spotted out here frenzy just gonna barely get away there from brandon so it will still be a 1v2 here with 29 seconds left. Yeah, so Brandon going to try to wrap around the other way. Might spot out Fallen, and he does. But Fallen going to get a lot of early shots. And I'm making it very difficult for Brandon to win this gunfight. Seven and a half second to fuse. And that is going to be the push from Utica to close things out. And that all started with the player advantage in the Russian middle. I don't understand it. I don't. Like, I just, like, I, I, I get it a little bit. But I don't as well. Like, Sauce just slid in there, right, looking inside that building. There could have been a player inside the building. There could have been a player there where he got killed from. Uh, that's the why you don't gamble to seek mid. That's literally yeah. a gamble. It's like flipping a coin, right? And uh, it, it's going to result in Utica College's favor, where St. Clair, they have the skill where they don't have to play gamble plays. Yeah, and we saw there, actually, Priestley could have traded him up, but just wasn't able to land those shots. And it meant that Frenzy picked up 2K really, really early on in that round, and that was very integral. But... Like I said, this was where St. Clair kind of struggled in their last series. So Utica taking advantage of that, saying, okay, we know they like to rush in. And I mean, it is very important to try and get control of B site early on in the round because it means you can't rotate through it for the attackers. And it makes it very, very hard in how you play out the rest of the round. Yeah, for sure. So 
also, I just I don't think St. Clair is as comfortable on Sano Search yeah. and Destroy, maybe as they think they are, or as if, like, I, I don't really know. Like, I'm, that's why I was so talking about not seeing Miami Search and Destroy earlier, uh, just because it, it's such a, you know, more consistent map for the Saints. They've won it consistently. They've, they've played well on it. They know what to do more accurately than on the standoff. So... We'll see. And it also looks like Utica looks like they know damn well what they're doing here on standoff. So you can tell that there's some BF2 players potentially. But diving going to go down. So we are going to see a 3v3 here. Now making things a little bit better for the Saints. But look at how much time is left. Like they got to make a play. And it does look like this is going to be over towards A. Yeah, Plant could go down here in just a second. Yeah, it will. So they will get down on A side here. But we'll be oh. challenged. Rilla going down early. Bomb will be planted. Will be traded up by Frenzy. So in the end, it is 2v2 now. Gunfight can come down. But Chai Allen barely so surviving. Close. Oh my god, Priestley somehow keeping his life. He's going to run into a two, and St. Clair cleaning them both up in the street. That's going to be a tie game here now in the Saints on the offense, but that's <laughs> a lot closer for comfort than needed to be. Uh, it's going to be the Saints just barely getting away with that one. Uh, some sh A little bit of missed shots there from a couple of the guys so far throughout this game. It looks like uh, they're a little bit shaky on them, but they are looking to bounce back here with some more shots going forward and it's gonna be frenzy starting off three and one and polish prince two and two both players playing fairly well to start us off and priestly gonna come in with a whopping four and one yeah he's been performing pretty well so far in search and destroy and we are even up in one round of peace we are gonna be down to a best of five now here in this and i mean for me i look forward at the rest of the series oh, i'm not gonna go down oh, really wow. really early here as i'm saying that polish prince Again, going to survive and bomb already down. No, no one take it down yet. So this is going to be a very interesting retake. It's going to be hard. It's a seven and a half second time to uh, to get that defuse. Jalen's not even close. So they're not even going to anticipate Jalen over there, and uh, it's just going to be making things very, very difficult. Sauce going to try to get a big flank on these players, but Jalen gets a big flank on St. Clair. That is going to be Brandon going down. Priestley going to be tagged up and stuck into a corner. Jalen cleans up two. Sauce will take down Polish Plank Prince on his flank, but this is looking like it's all in favor of Utica College here right now. Two v. Three, and uh, Utica College just have all the advantage with the bomb being down and being able to play time. Gorilla goes down all up to Sauce. He's going to get into a long-range gunfight with Frenzy. Utica College going to win it. And so far, all three offensive rounds have been won. Yeah, and I think for me, I look at that round and Jalen was just the difference maker there. Picks up two kills here, but more importantly, um, the fact that they were able to get that bomb plant down so early allowed him to go for this long flank because St. Clair forced to try and find that, forced to try and get onto that site means they can't afford to watch their flank and Jalen took advantage of that. And I mean, now with a 2-1 lead, definitely attacker favored so far in this one. But uh, in the end, I definitely think St. Clair just kind of struggling to find their shots when they need to. I wouldn't say this map's fully attacker favored. I just think it's fully just these how these two teams play. Yeah. Um, it really makes it attacker favored. Polish gonna get spotted out there now. Sauce and Priestley gonna be able to get a little bit of control over the site, but that's actually gonna be Brandon losing his life early in this round. Saint Clair once again gonna be playing from down a player, and it seems like we're seeing that a lot. Yeah, for sure. I feel like Saint Clair playing these aggressive. Uh, peaks aren't really taking advantage of it. And we were talking about like how for the last four or five weeks they haven't played a game um, there we with go. the same caliber players. So I think for them, it is ego peaking these corners and it isn't really working out for them early on in these games. It is now. They got three picks. And it's a three on one for St. Clair. They're just going to get this bomb down. Jalen, the last player alive to worry about. This Sasha getting this bomb down. Yeah, there it is. So there's the start we're looking for now. All up to Jalen. What can you do here? He's over towards that B bomb site. Now we're over back towards Gas. Trying to get a flank on a couple of these players potentially. And go. Gorilla going to get spotted out here, but now uh, Sauce and Priestley know exactly where Jalen is, what he's going to do, and he's got about 30 seconds here to make a play. Not a whole lot of time to work with. They're just going to play this very safe and conservative. Wait for him to push up onto this bomb. And he can't clear out this corner either because he doesn't have any grenades available. So he will have to just peek this one. I hope you can find him. Priestley going to be spotted out here. Jalen still holding this other corner, though. Will walk all the way around. So you're going to see Sauce on site, but he's going to escape again, and now no he has time. to try and fight this 1v2. Can he do it? No. He's going to try and lay down here looking for one priestly gonna find him that's gonna be st Clair evening up at two apiece he really should have just flew in there around that 13 yeah. second marker just at that point of time it's like okay what do you have to lose it's a seven and a half second defuse your best hope is to just fly in and try to find something but not gonna work out in his favor and it's gonna be once again an offensive round win and uh, no surprises there now the thing is if it's strictly offensive round wins it's gonna be utica cleaning it up so we need a, at least a defensive round when if st Clair wants to come through with this map number two yeah, and we watched them early on in the season. This is exactly what happened. It was attacker favored the entire way, and then St. Clair found a defensive round, and that really made the difference in why they turned that series around. Um, but so what we're seeing so far, just a little bit of ego peaking here by St. Clair has cost them early on in these rounds. 
I want to see them play way more defensive in how they take the, in how they play these sites, and, and I think that'll definitely bode better for them. Looking forward in this series. Yeah, so it is going to be Diamond and Sauce getting to an early engagement there. A couple of little utils sent down, but Brandon going to clean up Polish Prince early in this round. Diamond going to get tagged by some nades. I think they know there's a lot of players grouped up in that mid spot. Like they're trying to fire some shots in there, but not working out for them. I really like Saint Clair having a player advantage on the defense. I think it's really going to help them in closing out this round, especially if Sauce can do some work here. He gets some tags on a frenzy, really opening that player up a little bit. And Brandon just has the line of sight, like almost ready to go. He's going to try to find his feet, and he does. Frenzy tagged down, forced out of position, and now Frenzy stuck in the corner. Sauce gonna go down though, but Frenzy's pinched. Trophy system is down here, but he's gonna get spotted out. Diving gonna go down as well. And this could be a defensive round for St. Clair. Gorilla gonna find one. There's only one person there remaining. St. Clair gonna clean it up, and they will claim the first defensive round of this search and destroy. And it was clean. Yeah, like, that was very, a clean round good. there. That that's This is how defense should be played on standoff. I don't know what I've been watching the last seven rounds, but this is how defense should be played. Um, it is now going to be the set of St. Clair taking a massive advantage, taking a defensive round, to be honest. They're going to be leading in the game 3-2. That's an advantage as is. But if they win this offense here, it's just going to help them so, so much with the scoreline. And uh, I think that they're going to, obviously, and me personally, going to be a favorite to win the offense as we've only seen one defensive round win. Yeah, for sure. Priestley sitting at 8-2, and two, doing so well. And we were talking about he is that X-Factor for St. Clair. Brandon going to be the X-Factor himself in this round. Going to find friends with that first pick. Nate going to oh, come through, though. So close. Be taken out. So we'll be traded out now 3-3. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you just sit in the corner. You're like, let's hope, man. Fingers crossed, but didn't Please work out there. Grenade. Please don't have a grenade. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't have a nade. Yeah, it didn't work out there for Brandon. So we will see a three-on-three three here now with St. Clair still on the attack. Dive in there and a shot down from Preeksy, though. He's advancing now to 9-2. and two. What a game. Like you were saying, X-Factor kind of player here coming through. And uh, this bomb will be getting planted now. So trophy system down as well. And this is looking very nice for St. Clair. Especially, I love Gorilla's location because it really puts a lot of pressure on the line where Utica wants to push. Gorilla will fall off it but he's already put that pressure on now making Utica a little concerned yeah and these two players are now split for Utica Sauce getting spotted out here but not going to go down Priestley going to come here to help him out he will not go down either but we will spot it out that that's huge looking for this pistol kill as well to follow up he's oh. not going to get it though so I was going to trade it out in St. Clair, going to clean it up on the other end as well, and then go up 42. Yeah, that's the massive round right there, right? It's it's winning the defense and then following it with the consistent offensive win is what's going to help you pull away in the score line. It's exactly what we're seeing right now from St. Clair, 4-2. Is your prediction still the same, John? Yeah, I think for me, I don't want to go back to my prediction. I'm going to stick with it. I definitely think Utica still have a chance here. If they can claim a defensive round, they that's can't put themselves yeah. back into this one, but... I think St. Clair last couple rounds have just looked way more consistent. They haven't been taking those super early eagle peaks, and I think that's helped them out a lot. Yeah, they just haven't been taking risks. Them playing safe Call of Duty, and safe Call of Duty is nice Call of Duty. <laughs> and it's going to be Priestley. Oh, that, I mean, I say that, and then Priestley just runs out and shoots into three players, finds a kill. And Diving couldn't be pushed out as well. That's when you know sometimes you get a little too over aggressive. Priestley going to drop there. He is 10 and 4, though, so they're doing all right there in that regard. Brandon just going to be watching any kind of push. And here it is two players coming his way, but two too many. Now this is going to be bombed down. Brandon and Sauce both losing their lives. Gorilla and a one on three. And he has to retake a site as well. This is not going to be easy, especially when he just got flashed. So they know exactly where he is. Yeah, Gorilla going to have to try and 1v3 here. There's one behind the tank. He's going to spot it out. And Utica going to claim around for themselves, pull it within one, and give themselves a little bit of hope here in Search and Destroy. That tank positioning is just so nice. Like, it's such a good god heady. Like, you're literally sitting there, and you can see, like, the top of somebody's dome. Uh, and that's all you're able to shoot out there. So... Now switching sides once again, it's going to be St. Clair put back onto the offensive side of things, and for the side of Utica, they are able to pick up that uh, offensive round themselves, but this is where it comes down to Utica. If they want to come through with the win here now, you got to pick up the defense, right? And and it, I could see it definitely being a possibility. We've had some very close rounds, but if this is your uh, opportunity to try to make something go. Yeah, they will be playing this pretty safely here for St. Clair so far. Nate's going to come out across the map and not going to find anybody. We'll find... Jalen, so they know that he's back there. And Brandon can get one with a nade on a Polish Prince, so the advantage already here for St. Clair on the attacking side. Yeah, that, that's always big, right? Having that player advantage in Search and Destroy, especially 4-on-4 four four rather than 5-on-5, five five, is so big, right? So here we go. It's now going to be Frenzy spotted as well. No tags hit on him quite yet. They know where Brandon is. He does make it out with his life, though, all A-OK. -okay. Now Frenzy actually spotted out behind the van and shot down from Priestley. Now trying to focusing out Divin and Sauce and Priestley going to be the SMGs from St. Clair trying to go, but that's actually me. Priestley tagged down pretty weak now, too. He's not going to be able to get that trade. Usually, he would, but tagged down very weak. Yeah, unfortunately, he was able to convert that one, but Brandon will find Divin. It's just going to be 
Jalen versus th two or three, actually. He can do this, but fucking spot out Gorilla. Not going to take the shot, though. Waiting for Bruce Lee. Goes for the plant, and he's going to get him there. Looking for a second one. Knows where Gorilla is, but it doesn't matter. Gorilla going in that gunfight and going to go up five to three now. Now, the thing is, if you're in that situation and you're, uh, who's that last player alive again? Was it Jail Jalen? Jalen. Yeah. Um, he could have killed that bomb planter and then not challenged Gorilla. There's 20 seconds on the clock. St. Clair would have re had to rehop that bomb. They don't have time to run at B. They would have had to rehop it back on A. And, um, he could have just fed off the picks on that site there. But it is going to be St. Clair picking up that attack. Now, only one more needed for St. Clair where Utica going to need three in a row. Same position as, uh, th they were in last time around, just, except just flipped here. Just flipped, yeah. And I mean, for me, in a 1v2 scenario, I think Jalen does that where he gets that pick and then backs off. But the problem is you're in a 1v3, right? So if someone's coming on the flank for you, you have to challenge that early or else that flanker is going to get you. And early on, Gorilla going to get frenzy in this round. This is not looking good for Utica. Yeah, getting an initial pick on the defensive side of things is so big to open you up, and I think they have a rough idea on where these players are, because St. Clair has a lot of map control here right now, and they haven't really seen a lot of players yet, but they've cleared a lot of areas, so they're like, okay, guys, they're going to have to be in some of these areas. Now, Brandon going to spot a two. He's going to go for a challenge on Jalen. I don't know how I feel about that challenge. It looked like Jalen just had the huge upper hand on that. Gorilla going to go down as well, but Priestley will answer back with one of his own, but he's going to get re from up top. Does he keep his life? I'm so surprised he hasn't gotten child from his back. And Jalen going gonna win that one up from above now sauce last player alive playing around this cafe market area and a 1v2 can he make it work they do have bomb it's not planted just yet just waiting oh for there the it peak. is and yeah Utica gonna take it but again now they're gonna have to find a defense round because St. Clair is gonna be attack here on that on a uh, game point yeah uh St. Clair looking phenomenally good as per usual here now it's that's the thing, right? It's all about finding your defensive round win because St. Clair, like you said, on attack here now, the one that's been so consistent, um, you only need to find one, too, because you're back on the offense after and you can close things out there. Utica, all the pressure's on for them, I feel like. Yeah, this is where they're going to have to step up here. Jalen, 10 and 5, doing so well in this game. Priestley, 12 and 6, both these players playing well in this search and destroy. And one of them is going to have to step up here in this 10th round to try and push it to round number 11. Yeah, so Priestly firing some shots. They're going to push Jalen off a little bit. They're going to try to maybe get a cheeky A plant. Big frags from Sauce early diving. Going to be tagged down. He's forced off. So that's a clean player advantage. We've not traded out there from the side of Saints. Jalen also going to get tagged. Maybe the nade going through could do some work onto him, but doesn't look to be the case as of yet. And this A plant now looking to go through. Diving has spotted something. Going to get a nade down. Sauce is tagged, but the flak jacket going to keep him keep his life for him. Yeah, just couldn't able, wasn't able to convert there on the grenade didn't go for the challenge Priestley gonna get one on the back end Jalen gonna get one diving gonna go down as well that's gonna be it St. Clair gonna take the round and take the map at six to four and gonna go up to 2-0 and bring us to match point they've been doing a really good job of keeping things close though Utica gotta give props to where it's due right they, they were providing St. Clair a real challenge there obviously we've seen when St. Clair's challenged they, we can obviously tell from casting them all season long you can see when they're a little bit more challenged than usual and that was one of those case scenarios there here now um but with St. Clair taking a 2-0 lead in this series, I am just don't see a world where yeah. Unica can come through a win, especially with what we're heading on to right now, which is going to be Raid Control, a Saints favorite. I'd probably say their best mode and their best map in one. Like, it, it's just, I think their win percentage on it's like something like crazy. It's 90% plus. It, it's nuts. Yeah. It's it's really good for them. And I mean, looking back on game number two, again, like I said, it was the same story as the last matchup they had. It was attackers winning every single round. And it was just someone found that defensive round. It was St. Clair, again, finding a defensive round. And that really made a difference because when you're playing against uh, such a strong team, you really have to kind of rely on your strategy. And the strategy was, okay, we went on attack and then find that one defensive round uh, that you can pick up. And that's really going to make a difference in the series. And yep. we see now a 2 0 up for St. Clair. They're looking to try and close it out and send Utica packing. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and they're just trying to win their conference here right now. They're just trying to close things out. You, there's no way you don't drop a map and then don't win your conference yeah, right now, right? So, St. Clair just looking to do that. Now, the thing is, St. Clair is looking to do it flawlessly. To win your conference flawlessly, like, that's a big, like, that's an achievement there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, Utica and St. Clair now getting ready to hop in to this raid control. Um, I was going to say, like, what do you think Utica has to do? To like shut down the Saints. I, I mean, I know it's so hard, and I know the Saints are really good at like cap like capitalizing on no matter what a team throws at them on uh, raid control. But what do you think they can do? I think watching them all season, the one time they have been the rounds taken off them, it's because you end up taking advantage of their aggressiveness on attack and 
kill them on their rotations, right? Because you see a lot of times what they'll do is they'll rush through A, they'll go all the way to spawn, and then they'll start killing you in spawn, and they'll whittle down your lives. And yes, you're able to take control of sites a little bit easier, but the problem is you end up being down 5, 10 lives by the time you end up getting that second site. Yep. So I think for Utica, you have someone watching your flank, you make sure that when they go for those spawn peaks, you're able to take them out, and that's going to mean you take sites way more easily, and you have to take advantage of that extra time you have to get those objectives and convert it into actual points and into rounds. Yes, we are going to be loading up on a raid control here. And, you know, for the side of both teams, always got to pay attention to those lives, man. Those lives can sometimes really nip you on the rear end. So we'll see what happens. Though St. Clair going to be on your left. Utica on your right getting underway with raid control. St. Clair starting off on the attacking side of things. This is their bread and butter. This is what they're known for in Utica. Going to have to somehow find a win here. Force us into a game number four and go for the reverse Ooh. sweep. Or else this is going to be over. The season's going to be over. And everything they report so far in the season is going to be over. Early picks from St. Clair. Brandon is pushing into spawn. Going crazy. Frenzy not able to spot out Brandon quite yet. Now Brandon in top window. Going to be able to get some tags. Frenzy cleaned up. Brandon going to back up and keep his life. But good stuff there. Saw still on point. But he is contested. Does find the player. And finds the Fred. That is going to be one tick on the point for A for St. Clair here now. And clock is still top. We've only burned 10 seconds off the clock. Lives are even. So far so good for St. Clair. The problem is right now, Utica has two people watching mid, and I mean, unless they're willing to just give up A site here and just go for B, which it looks like they're going yeah, to. Yeah, you have to at this point. You can't really do anything about this, and the problem was you, you had a little bit of miscommunication there. They went for a flanker as well as someone in mid, and it didn't really work out because they couldn't push through. They lost people on site very, far too quickly, and now you just have B site to spend. Another thing is, Sinclair has tons of time, a live, uh, uh, sorry, a live advantage, tons of time, and their map favor. Like, I mean, this is really just looking beautiful here execution from St. Clair. The early A cap was so big. But the advantage now is going to be for the defenders. There is only one site you can push on as the attacker, so you're going to know exactly where St. Clair is going to push. So for right now, I think Utica definitely can take some lives back. Try and put themselves towards even here. And I mean, St. Clair hasn't really made any progress on at this point yet, so definitely still advantage here for the defenders. Yeah, but St. Clair's just slaying out at this point in time. We were from a four live advantage now to a seven. So St. Clair's still doing their ability in a fragging regard. And they have lots of time. Like, they could win this off of frags if need be. Um, especially when Gorilla and Brandon are making plays like that. Jalen will answer back, takes down Priestley there. And I think he might have been spawned from Gorilla. Maybe not quite yet, but Gorilla just looking to find these two, and he does. Oh, That's going to cut a lot of players off rotation. Opens this one up massively for St. Clair. Jalen is forced to play back here a little bit now. St. Clair is about to get a first tick onto B. Sauce going to get some shots sent on to him. Um, but so far, so good here now for St. Clair. Lies are 18 to 8 here. Uh, minute and 10 remaining. Yeah, I don't think it's been really reflected in the KDs, but I think Gorilla has had such a good day today. He's looked so good. Yeah. Both especially on hardpoint and on control so far. He's just looked incredible. And I think he kind of gets overlooked a lot. You have, because you have players like Priestley, you have players like Sauce, who have their times where they just completely frag out and they're able to get those multi kills and it looks incredible on the highlight reels. But I think Gorilla has just looked so good today overall. And I really want to give credit to him. He's looked massive on the multi kills too. So they actually do clean out this B site. So no game over here yet, but only one live for Utica leaves Jalen all alone. This is over. Like St. Clair, it's 14 v one Jalen going to get cleaned up. St. Clair will take your round number one of control here. And um, am I surprised? No. Am I surprised on how dominant that was? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we didn't really predict them to go... I mean, 14 lives remaining at the end of that is pretty crazy. And it, I mean, it all started off with that really, really quick Look at this. Take, right? Yeah, Gorilla just uh, incredible here. Picked up two. Was able to escape from the last player as well. But I mean, we saw it all started off from that A take, right? They got A literally within 30 seconds of the start of the round. And when you put that much pressure on the other team starting off that well, it does mean that moving forward, it's so hard to try and play defense because you're at such a live deficit. And from there, St. Clair just took advantage of it and were able to close off that round pretty easily. Yeah, completely agreed once again. And it's now the defense to play. And honestly, defense, a little bit more difficult to work with here. So they're going to be trying to stop that one. But Frenzy actually going to team kill dive. And that is a not a great start if you are from the side of Utica, losing a couple of players early on. And this one, Gorilla, looking to find this player as well. And he does. Now they're trying to focus some pressure onto the site. I think he saw him hop up. Yes, he did. Priestley going to be able to frag out. That one trophy system down on site. Priestley just fragging out in middle ground. And... This is looking nice for St. Clair. They have an early live advantage, and they're looking to find more. Priestley's going to get shot down in mid, though. Yeah, not as solid of an attack here as we saw out of St. Clair. They did get one tick onto A site for Utica, but now they will try and transfer that into B and look for something else. But St. Clair right now just playing their strategy very, very well. You see Sloss looking for those spawn kills wherever he can find them. 
trying to take advantage of it, but you feel looking like they want to go for B now. Yeah, it, it does look to be the case. They have a lot of control over B. Gorilla getting that pick and money was uh, very upsetting for Utica because that was a big control point that they needed to take this site. To lose that now, it's going to be hurtful. It's going to push these players back, and look at this is what's going to happen in result. St. Clair also with the six live lead. They have only lost five lives so far in control, and there is 30 seconds left for Utica to try and take a point here. That is massive. The fact that you're able to keep that many people oh, alive. Streaks. And Streak's going to come through as well. This is going to be really tough for me to see them come back. Gorilla going to find two. Oh, Freaks going to find another. They're going to clean this one up. 23 seconds left. St. Clair's defense looking perfect so far. Like, this is why it's so hard to play St. Clair on raid control. Do you remember the scoreline last time St. Clair and Utica played? And was it raid? It was raid control, and I'm pretty sure it was 3-0. Yeah. Damn. Like, I mean, it's just... <laughs> watching the VODs back, like... It, it just looks so nice to see what they do and the plays they make. But 14 seconds on the clock. They are on zone B, so the time has been stopped for now, but not anymore. That's going to be Sauce getting team kill from Gorilla Streaks. But he did find one, and Sauce found a frag himself. So it worked out in the end of the day, especially when they're doing stuff like this. Now, only one player on A is what's keeping this clock stopped. But it doesn't even really matter if they capture something or not now, because the lives are just so down bad for Utica. Yeah, when you, you can afford to get a team kill when you're up 12 lives. I think it's going to be okay here. They're going to oh. find some more. No respawns left. But no time left either. That's going to be it for this one, St. Clair. Going to take round number two and going to go to match point here. It's series point, actually. And St. Clair, Clair, back on the attack. I mean, honestly, I just, I, I'm just i predicting a 3-0 right here right now. I think St. Clair cleans up this attacking round. I think that the mental right now for Utica is slowly downhill. Uh, just due to these control rounds going the way they are. Especially how dominantly they are. And... Um, I, they just, I think they're slowly starting to be, be like, feel a little bit more defeated. Um, but St. Clair is playing cracked out right now. They're looking amazing. I'm not going to say they're peaking because they've been, they've been playing well yeah. all season, right? Um, but they are doing really well. What I might say is I'm not, like, Gorilla, he's not, like, maybe peaking, but he's playing very, very close to it or very well. Yeah, he's been playing so well in this series, and it's really good showing. I mean, moving forward, we talked about how good Priestley is, talked about how good Sauce is, but I feel like Brandon and Gorilla, kind of the supports for them, have looked so good in this series. You see them both 16 and 8, 19 and 6 in this control. Um, it is really their time to shine, and moving forward, it's so scary for the other teams in the playoffs, right? Because you say, what is their weakness? You know, obviously, we talked about a perfect map count so far in the season. Ooh. They have no weakness in the team play, and when you have no weakness in your players either, there just seems like there's no way through this team. Yeah, exactly. So clock stopped here now as they do hop on B and A, but now it's going to be A, the only one actually getting controlled as of now. Brandon and Jalen getting into a little bit of a tussle there. It's going to go in favor of Brandon. Now B point going to be getting once again captured. Clock stopped. Lives are slightly in favor of St. Clair and Jalen forced to come on the rotate, but Brandon cutting it off with E is going to take that player down to essentially 1 HP. And he's tucked away in the corner. Doesn't matter. Priestley will be there. Or sorry, Krilla will be there. And uh, now, I mean, I, all these kills are just going in favor of St. Clair right now. Like, I mean, there's nothing you can do. B-point about to get captured here. And I don't think anybody's actually there to contest it. Yeah, and I think the reason that St. Clair is so effective in control is the fact that you can win those one-on-one -on -one gunfights. And when you can send one person into each way into a site, you don't have to worry about sending two to try and trade. When you're the other team, you have to send two because the only way you get that kill is usually when you send two people through so you can get that trade kill. It makes it so much easier to attack because you can only set, you can send one person through every way in. And for defense, you can send one person to hold every single site and uh, it's all you really need. You can send a couple people to flank. And I mean, for St. Clair, they're just so mechanically talented that playing against these teams, it just feels like they have such a big advantage, especially on something like control. Yeah. You you see them now really getting into the groove of things here. Um, it's just looking so well. And this is the roster of St. Clair that you see when you're playing the other top teams, right? Like, this is when, like, them in their groove, like, actually, like, you know, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, when they're playing against top teams, they just look better still. Despite playing, I don't even know how to, I don't even know what I'm getting into right now. But they're, <laughs> they're really practicing. I mean, we were talking about earlier on. This is practice for your playoff run, right? Yeah. This is against better teams. And through the regular season, they weren't playing against, you know, the best teams. Obviously, it's, they have a perfect map. Perfect. They've won every single game. So they're not playing against teams that are challenging them. But something like Utica is going to be more of a challenge for them. And it means they have to be warmed up. They have to be ready to move forward into the rest of the playoffs. Because this is crunch time. This is when you need yeah. to get serious. This is when you need to work together as a team and say, okay, 
the rest of the regular season, yes, we won it out. Yes, we have a really good seed, but now we're in playoffs. This is where we play against teams from other conferences that are just as good as us, and we need to be ready for them. Yeah, and honestly, I think there's an argument as well that I could say that Utica um, is better than is going to be better than some of the other playoff teams that make it through. Yeah. That's going to be my personal argument. Just because you had to go through the Saints is a tough demon to have to go through, right? And um, you're not able to make it out of that conference as the only the winner of the conference does go through yeah. to those conference playoffs. But it's it's really you know like man <laughs> Utica I feel bad GG's overall they played really well yeah. and I was actually really excited to come in and cast a good game of COD for once it, despite it being a 3-0 it was a great game uh, I loved how Utica played um, I think they have a few minor tweaks to make some minor changes and they could look like a top roster yeah for sure I think they can definitely challenge St. Clair uh, in the next couple mm -hmm. of years but for right now St. Clair going to be the dominant team going to win this series 3-0 and I mean Looking forward at the rest of the playoffs, I think St. Clair just played so well. I think, again, their search and destroy, a little bit iffy. There was definitely times there where they had a, a couple of ego peaks that didn't end up working out that way. Yep. And we're talking about like moving through out this, the rest of the playoffs. You're going to have a lot of times where you're going to get challenged, especially on search and destroy. So um, definitely looking forward. That is something they can improve on. But other than that, I mean, rate control 3-0. They looked completely dominant there. And, and it looked like two different teams from search and destroy to rate control. It felt like St. Clair, they were up... 20 lives at some point yeah i mean you just it's two I think, different teams i think they need to see more snd practice yeah, still sure. um because there can be the argument made as well that utica college is an snd team right yeah true. like there's a lot true. of team there's a yeah, lot of you sure. know like the argument could be made in that regard too um but the argument could also be made that st Clair's a respawn team yeah. uh right so th there's lots of argument there that could be made all i'm saying is st Clair, their worst mode going to be search and destroy they'd even admit it right yeah. that that's something that maybe needs to get cleaned up here a little bit but we got going on in the vanguard here like I, i'm it's excited true. for that it's man like it, i know that we're actually not broadcasting any until the second semester but very very exciting i'm very excited yeah. to actually get into broadcasting that and getting some ccl games and whatnot but st Clair college going to win their conference here in the star league and same with saints rock league if you guys were tuned in earlier saints rock league going to win 4-1 there as well and i believe oh my god my brain is baffled right now ryerson rams as we played yeah. there 4-1 over ryerson rams and that is going to be both teams advancing to conference finals so i know going into today i said to you john before we even started st Clair goes seven and no on maps and games today so it was seven and yeah. one. So yeah, this was the conference finals. That's why I was meaning there. So yeah. the conference finals, both won in favor of St. Clair. And St. Clair goes seven and one in maps in their conference finals today. Very, very nice. Um, you know, you go four and one for the Rock League team, and then you go three and zero for the Saints College team. So very, very nice stuff from all of them. Uh, not my seven and zero prediction, but very, very close to it. You're almost there. Almost. There. I mean, I did predict three one at the end. I was going to go four zero for St. Clair for Rock League. So it was a seven one, just not the way we expected. It, or I expected it to be. But uh, I mean, in the end, St. Clair just absolutely dominating the conference finals. Can't wait to see what they can pull out in the playoffs because that's where the real competition is going to begin for a lot of these teams. And I mean, for now, we will see them move on, and unfortunately, we will have to say goodbye to Ryerson and Yuka but I, I think even though it was a 4-1 and a 3-0 I think it was really good competition for St. Clair mm -hmm. and I think it was the first time we've seen them really challenged at this kind of level yeah first time this semester right? yeah this semester. Well, last semester. season yeah. we saw a lot of challenge there for St. Clair but the thing is what I love about collegiate esports is all those teams are different now. They're, yeah. you know, half those teams have players that graduated, dropped and they're out, always something happened. Too. They're always improving. Yeah, it, it's so nice to see, and I'm very excited for the future of collegiate Call of Duty, especially. So, very excited to see how things go. But with that being said, we are looking to wrap things up here momentarily. But before we do so, we got some thank yous to say to our sponsors and whatnot. So, shout out to Crunchyroll. They're our newest sponsor joining us in this semester. And uh, you guys can get a 14 day premium trial for free. Crunchyroll.com backslash Saints. Essentially, the Netflix of anime there, John. I know you love that. One. So I do love that it quote. is going to be anything you couldn't really kind of imagine there to find anime wise. It's most likely on Crunchyroll there. And you guys, once again, 14 day premium trial for free. Crunchyroll.com backslash Saints. And thank you to our other sponsors as well Tim Hortons, Subway, the St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. Wouldn't be able to put on fantastic broadcasts like this if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you guys so, so much for tuning in as well to you viewers. And if you guys are interested in getting some merch, I know you only have the mask on right now. I know I'm a little out of shape. I kind of wash the jacket sometime, man. I'm starting to stink. Yeah, no, like, you, I got... wear, you wear it too much. You're too too proud of the jack you, you love it too much <laughs> the dark mode merch is just it's so nice 10 out of 10 man so, nice. so very excited for the new stuff to come in but besides the point if you guys are interested in any saints merch we got everything from jerseys jackets t-shirts hoodies crew necks flags hats shoes <laughs> shoes? <laughs> shoes soon on the way soon. <laughs> talk to chris <laughs> anyways acquire.ca backslash saints if you guys are interested kind of been the running joke this like a dark theme mode kind of merch here so very excited to see that all through acquire very nice quality and good prices so acquire.ca backslash saints get any of your saints merchant support squad in that regard and with that being said though john you got any final words for us here to close out for the night 
Or for uh, the day, for the day. For the day, for the day. Uh, Thursday is going to be their next playoff run. So if you want to catch both Rocket League and Call of Duty, you can catch them on Thursday. I believe it'll be at 7, 6.37 p.m., around there. It's something around there, yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, so. if you want to watch them move on, come check check on us Thursday evening. We'll be here. We'll be broadcasting it live from the studio here, and it's going to be some exciting stuff. And, it, and it'll be nice to see. We've talked a lot about both these teams haven't really had good competition yet, but I think playoffs really is where it's going to turn up. Yeah, I'm and so excited. we're going to see both these teams really challenged. I mean, we've been waiting all semester, all season long, for playoff action to come around, and here it is now. This is where things really start to get... Getting up. I'm going to get my rally caps going on in here, and we get fist pumps going in the air. Let's go. So, anyways, with that being said, though, guys, we are going to be wrapping things up here. Now, if you guys are interested, following all of our scheduling, Saints Gaming CA on all socials there. Follow our schedules on our Twitter and everything like that. Things will be posted to keep you guys all in the loop in there. So, with that being said, though, thank you so, so much for tuning in. My name, personally, Jackson, Deprived Brown, joined alongside John, Billabang, Zwadima, and you guys were watching St. Clair Saints Call of Duty. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and we'll catch you guys all on the next one.